Hi guys, it's Frans, welcome to this video where I will be upcycling an old atlas. So, this is what I started with. Uh, it's a 1956 atlas and I started by taking out the remaining pages inside of it. Um, these were the pages that I used um, in my Etsy shop for one of the vintage papers kits. So, I'm taking everything out except for the first and the last page, which are attached to the cover. And I'm also taking away this yucky plastic cover that was on there. I want to keep this spine, as I like the, round, um, the roundness of it, but it will need some surgery, as you will see. Now my atlas is a little too big for an A4 size page and I want to use this as a file folder for my paperwork. So I'm cutting off P uh, the down part of the cover, just using my cutter and ruler. As the cover is a bit wonky and not very straight anymore, I'm using my ruler as well as the already cut piece of the cover to see where I'll have to cut the other side. To make sure that I still have something straight in the end. Then I also need to cut off what's left over of the spine. As you can see, this side of the spine really isn't holding too much anymore. But I want to keep it that way. Then I'm going in with a very fluid glue to glue down that first and last page to the covers. So I'm not taking any risks by taking them away. Um, I'm leaving them in place, even if the paper is not so pretty. And if you are a real book restorer, you might get sick watching this video. So please go do something else. <laughs> this is just um, trying to give a second life to this, to this atlas um, that was just laying around and make something fun of it. I want to keep my paperwork inside of it. So that's what it will be used for. So it will receive a lot of love in the end, even if it might look that I'm not treating it with, with much of respect right now. So now that the second play page is glued as well, I can go in and give the spine a bit of a reinforcement. This is a teaser cloth fabric tape. It's pretty strong and yet very flexible and it will allow me to keep the shape of the spine as it is right now. You can either cut the tape at the length of the book or you can leave a little triangle and then fold it over, which I will be doing on the side that's, that's the most um, damaged. So on the outside of the cover, I put three layers of the tape to make sure that everything would stay in place, even when using this um, intensively. So I'm leaving a little tail, then I'm cutting a triangle, and I'm folding this back inside, which you cannot see because it's off camera. Well done me. Now the other side I did cut to the length of the book because it didn't need that much reinforcement. So I will only do it with some of the strips but not with every one. So I keep adding on layers until I'm happy with the sturdiness. And as you can see on this side, I'm adding a lot of folded over uh, tape to make sure that everything will stay in place. 1956, that's the date on the cover of this atlas. The um, atlas has a funny texture to it. So I want to make sure that whatever I put on top of that will stay in place. So first I'm adding a thin layer of gesso. And it's not easy to apply it because of the texture of the atlas. So I'm also doing the same on the spine. And everything that I do on the front, I also do on the back. But I didn't show that in the video, just to cut the 
time in half. It's already an 18 minute video. But everything I did to the front, I also did to the back of my atlas. So thinly applying my gesso, taking care of really spreading it as much as I can. And also going into the folds of um, the spine. And now I go in with a baby wipe and I try to take part of the gesso away so that I still can see what was written on my cover because that's the point of using this book. I wanted to uh, keep the um, title and the inscriptions visible yet make them usable uh, to alter them. Giving it a quick dry with the heat gun before I go on and then repeating the same steps like I said on the back. So once the back is dried I go back to the front and I'm adding two colors of distress stain. If you want to know which colors I've used you can either check out the Mixed Media Place blog where you will also find direct links to um, the shop or you can check out the list of ingredients on my blog. I will add both links in the description of um, this video. So mixing up the two distress, uh, distress stains with a baby wipe and I'm really insisting to try to create uh, some shadings and lighter uh, spots. Then I'm going in using black gesso and a piece of cut and dry and then using a baby wipe again, um, blending everything together. Now you might think that going in with the black gesso is a scary step. It is because it's pretty dark. <laughs> it's black. But knowing what's underneath and knowing it hasn't, I'm not giving it any time to dry because I'm going in directly with a baby wipe. I can keep on playing until I have the effect that I want and lighten it up completely. I also added again some um, spl splatters of the stress stain to re-accentuate some um, spaces. And now I'm doing the exact same thing on the spine. So first going in with the distress stain, wiping it in with, uh, blending it together with a baby wipe and then adding the black gesso. Because you might think that because it is the Tisa um, fabric tape, it won't work. Well, it does. It has a different texture to it, so you will see it different, but it has the same reaction in the end as the rest of the cover of my book. So adding the black gesso and again using a baby wipe to blend everything together. As I need something that will work uh, despite all the layers that I have on the need, being the gesso and the funky texture, I'm going in with archival ink to distress the edges of my journal. So first I'm using the coffee one, just like I would do with distress ink. And I'm also insisting on the edges as you can see, so that everything has the same finish in the end. And then using a baby wipe, I'm not really wiping it away, I'm just touching it lightly, which makes the ink move around because it hasn't been heat set it yet. And then I'm doing the same thing with black archival ink, but in a much lighter way, just adding some touches here and there. This is acrylic glazing fluid to which I'm adding some primary element uh, pigment powder, mixing it together. And this will allow me to add some very light blue touches to my cover. The camera isn't picking much up, but you will see it in the end on the photos that it really has some soft blue shading to it. I really like the, the effect of this. And again, doing exactly same, the same thing on the spine and on the back of my book. I'm leaving my book to dry overnight and getting the inside ready. So these are just file folders. Um, if I was living in the US I would use manila file folders but we don't have those over here so I have to do it with what we have. 
Um, these are not very easy to colorize using the stress ink, but I'm doing it anyway. And then also using a craft envelope that I will be um, using for the inside of my atlas. As I said, I really want to use this for my paperwork, so I want it to be handy and adapted to my needs for my um, paperwork. And then just gluing one in the front and one in the back, and that allows me to very easily cover up that paper that I don't think is very pretty to show. So it's covering up, and at the same time, it's very handy. Now I also need something to attach my files in there, so I'm getting ready to make two holes and place two eyelets using my Big Bite. That is also one of the reasons that I needed the spine to be really reinforced so that it could take um, the, the files to be attached to it. So just playing, placing my eyelets and then fixing them with a big bite. I prepared a couple of, um, how do you call these, pouches with 7 dot studio paper. I cut several in several shapes and just folded um, two sides back so that I can glue them down. I also added distress ink to the edges to make it work with all the rest. And this allows me to cover up the ugly printing that I had on my file folders. So as you can see, I did several, glued them down on my file folders. I have two file folders in there. And now I can place everything inside the atlas. To attach the files to the atlas, I'm just using some, some rope, some sturdy rope that I'm um, placing in the middle of the files and then pushing them through the holes from the atlas and then just uh, making a knot on the outside of the atlas. So I can still take it back um, out if my file folders get too much damaged. Now to put the second rope in it was a bit more complicated. I first placed tape on the edges of the rope, cut it uh, in an ang at an angle so that it would um, work as a needle and that made it easier to get through the hole next to the other piece of rope that was already in there. And then doing the same thing, making sure everything is in place and then attaching it on the outside. And now this will also serve as a base for an embellishment. So as I, as I had to cut two pieces of rope away, I'm using them um, already to embellish my little cord on the outside. This is crinkle ribbon that I'm colorizing with some water and acrylic. I'm using two shades of blue. And then I will just take my crinkle ribbon through the color. And as I have some left over, I'm using some cambric fabric and I'm colorizing that as well. And it will also end up on my atlas. Cleaning my pipette, I'm just picking up some water and then emptying it on my um, piece of towel. Now, as I had my um, acolines out, I decided to add some splatters on my atlas as well. So using those uh, same two shades of blue, first halfway dry drying it and then picking the excess ink up. I don't want it to be big splatters on there, I just want it to be something soft, old, grungy. And then doing the same with a very light brown acrylic. So this is my piece of crinkle ribbon that dried uh, in the meantime, and now I can add it to add use it to add some more um, fabric on the outside spine of my book. Is there such a thing as an inside spine? I guess so. So doing the same thing with the cambric, I'm cutting it up in, in little strips and I'm adding it on the outside as well. This is a brown cambric that I had laying around, so using that as well.
And now I can give everything a little trim so that it looks a little bit more neat. I still had a couple of envelopes laying around, so I thought these would be handy as well in my file folder. So I did the exact same thing as with the big one. Double-sided tape on the back, a bit of distress on the front, distress ink on the front, and then attaching them inside um, the atlas. These will be very handy for receipts. My splattered mark stamp boutique stamps on which I'm applying some distress ink and spraying some water and then just randomly stamping. But I didn't add too much of that because in the end it will be something to work with. So there will be a lot of paper inside of it. And as there will be a lot of paper I needed to um, I needed something that will allow me to close it and to really keep it closed um, so that nothing falls out of it. So I'm adding a, a little clasp that I'm simply placing with a bread. And to make sure my atlas won't suffer too much from that clasp, I'm also adding a washer on the inside so that the bread isn't attached directly to the atlas but has metal all around. For the back I'm placing an eyelet through which I will place a piece of crinkle ribbon and that's what I will use to keep my file closed. That's it for today. If you liked today's video don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Both are very much appreciated. And see you back next time. Ta-da!